Faith doesn't require the ability to figure out your problem. It's the evidence of things that can't be seen, so relax. It's beyond the wisdom of man. Its nature is to be tested and to always prevail. Just because your faith is being tested doesn't mean there's something wrong. God's getting you ready to be lifted up. Thanks for joining us on Life Journeys, a podcast about thriving through the worst pain that life brings. With global initiatives threatening big changes to our way of life, we're going to need to activate Jesus' words about mountain-moving faith. Words That Work is the ongoing series on life journeys that is rooted in releasing revelational words of faith that will work every time and with everyone. It's about moving the mountains that keep us from the presence and goodness of God. It's about defining our life purpose and identity through encountering Him until we have the power to move the obstacles that are destroying our liberty and hope. Faith stands over against obstacles that are seen as impossible, things that are incurable, things that can't be bought or be humanly overcome. Believing God changes human hearts and costs everything we have in exchange for everything He has. When you sign up for the Walk of Faith, you need to know that you're getting yourself into something big. If you don't, and the teacher just tells you how much you'll be blessed and enjoy the journey, you'll most likely wind up disillusioned or shipwrecked altogether. Faith is hard because it's a spiritual walk, and we are so in tuned to walk by the flesh. To hold revelation knowledge in a carnal cup will not produce good fruit, and you'll wonder why your faith doesn't produce. So before you get too far in asking why your faith isn't producing better life circumstances, you might want to take notice if faith is producing a growing image of Christ within you or not. And don't be too hard on yourself. This kind of faith walk takes a long time to change us. Faithfulness is measured on the calendar, not the clock. Hebrews 11 shows us that faith has works. But first, let's look at this. By faith, the elders, it says, obtained a good report. It pleased God. How did this happen? They were sent out to spy on the land they were about to invade and possess. I asked myself why, and realized God was testing them. He wanted them to see all the human reasons why this was impossible to do. He wanted them to see all the negatives, all the reasons why this task is hard. He wanted them to further understand that only faith in God would win the day. If there was any human possibility, any warfare skills or great warriors or strategies by which they could hope to win, then God would not get the glory. So he sent out the spies. Faith is hard when we're still trying to figure out by some human way that we can win the day. All of it must be recognized as impossible. Faith's greatest victory is supernatural, only supernatural. I can't do it morally, physically, emotionally, or mentally. And that's a good thing. Then you're in a place where God can show up. That's why the spies came. That's why they were sent out. That's how they obtained a good report. The natural report was going to be bad. The enemy is too great would be what they would say. But God didn't send out the spies to see if they could take the land. He sent them out to see if they would. Now apply that faith to your own impossibilities. The elders turned some bad news into some good news. The enemy is greater than we are. It's going to be especially awesome when God gives us the victory. Thus, Faith gives God the glory. Remember Abraham? He was strong in faith, giving God the glory, the Bible says. These all received a good report. They turned the worst that the world gave them into a testimony of victory with no regard for what happened to them in this world. Faith is hard because it includes the surrender of everything we hold dear in this life. Its reward is eternal glory and its fragrance is love. Faith will cost you everything for the glory of God.
The greatest reward is God's glory and presence. The greatest manifestation is repentance, salvation, and love for God and men. The hardest thing in faith is believing, though it will cost me everything. My life for his life. That's not a defeat, a tragedy, or a reason to grieve. The nature of your walk of faith will either draw you closer to God, or it will reveal a dark area of your heart that will move you further away from Him. It's the nature of walking by faith that it will purify and refine your soul, and that's a good thing. You'll grow in wisdom, patience, self-control, mercy, kindness, and love. Faith's nature is to mature you and to mold you each day into the image of Christ. You'll become stronger against the wind. You'll draw further away from the world. You'll increase in obedience to God, and your treasure will become more and more that of heaven and God's presence. Or you'll step away, draw back, wind up lukewarm, increase in bitterness, have more trouble loving friends and enemies, and find yourself in a deep hole that will be harder to get out of, if ever. But know this. Faith will move you down a pathway one way or the other. Faith's relentless call will move you down a pathway. Don't think it'll be easy. Faith is hard because it requires the cross. Will you forsake human capacities for your well-being? Will you allow faith to refine you and create Christ's image in you? Faith is much harder when the answer is no. Faith changes us through refining, testing, and battling the devil. Why is it so hard? We need to understand why God uses faith, and it's not simply flooding us with miracles, blessings, healing, and more every time we ask Him. God is molding the lives of people to live by trusting in Him instead of themselves. Peter says, resist the devil. Firm in your faith. Well, resisting is hard work. Being refined is hard. He says, you are in manifold temptations, and you have heaviness because of it. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it's tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's what God is after by using faith instead of sight. Believing in the unseen changes human hearts that's what God is after when you're struggling with the life of faith and you wonder about so many things. Faith changes people for the glory of God. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Faith establishes a stable life. James says, Let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed about. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So realize that God is after a man that is not unstable. Wavering faith makes for an unstable life. Faith, James says, establishes works or it's fruitless. He says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered his son Isaac on the altar? Don't you see how faith worked with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? The scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Faith is perfected, you see, completed or fulfilled in its purpose when our works become established. That takes time. It again shows that God is using faith to make us. Faith is hard because it requires us to move. Requires us to move. Not God. 
Therefore, understand that faith is there not so much to get God to do something as it is to get us to do and to be something. Faith changes us, doesn't change God. Faith requires things that are hard on the flesh and usually impossible. Patience is hard. Keeping silent as we march around Jericho with our mouths closed is hard. Loving our enemies is hard. What does that have to do with faith? It's about believing God for our life instead of worrying about what men can take from us. Don't worry about what politicians are taking from you. They can't do anything that heaven won't allow. And they can't stop you from getting anything that heaven wants you to have. If you just believed more, well, that's usually total nonsense. Seek God. Seek the kingdom and His righteousness. Develop the fruit of the Spirit and learn to get quiet and hear God's voice and to humble yourself. Learn to truly love your enemies and believe against every impossible odd. That's the only place that real faith ever shows up. Too many people think they're just needing to stand in faith until God moves, but God's waiting for them to move and become that which glorifies God by becoming more like Him, filled with Him, and finding His presence as their great reward of faith. Remember Peter's dark night in the tomb after Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith doesn't fail. He was going to be sifted by Satan in the permission of God, and he would l need to learn to be made the man of God through his refining fire until he was converted again, the Bible says. Then he could go and strengthen his brothers. The journey makes the man as he follows the promise of faith. It strips him until he's walking by faith instead of by sight. He's walking in the spirit instead of the flesh. He believes who God is more than he believes what he sees with his eyes and feels and fears and touches. He's on a journey that makes him a spiritual man. He's led by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and is sanctified by the Spirit, not by religious flesh. His carnality is crucified by faith. He will one day die by faith, for he will walk through death's door in faith, and he will overcome it. He'll experience the truth that those who believe in Jesus will never die. Faith is dealing with the fleshly man until a spiritual man emerges. Cooperate with it. Take up the cross without which faith is impossible to walk out. It's the nature of faith to be tested. Don't always think that there's something wrong with you when faith doesn't seem to bear fruit you want on your timetable. God has a much higher agenda for you. You can unlock the presence of God in your life. There are revelation principles that remove the mountains, keeping us from joy, hope, peace, and purpose when our world gets turned upside down. Look for these words that work with Pastor Hardica as he shares what has helped him when life got hard. And don't forget to check out his book, The Fortress and the Firebrand, available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Thanks for listening to Life Journeys. Find new episodes every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you're new to this series, it begins with the September 16th episode. Faith doesn't require the ability to figure out your problem. It's the evidence of things that can't be seen. So relax. It's beyond the wisdom of man. Its nature is to be tested and to always prevail. Just because your faith is being tested doesn't mean there's something wrong. God's getting you ready to be lifted up.